Well, hey, good evening and welcome to our final Next Level Run call group of 2023. We have a very special guest joining us here tonight on our call. And tonight is something that we want you to uh, feel. We want you to feel. I, one of my training principles, and remember what we're doing here, we're developing champions. We're not trying to win the championship. We're developing champions and champions win champion championships. Re regardless of where we are and what we do, that's what we want to do is develop champions. And so uh, one of the things I do when I prepare a training, this is a tip for you tonight. You're not going to have to write much down. But I want to give people something to feel, something to remember, and something to do. That's the teacher in me. You want to, you, those connection points, everybody learns a little differently. And so tonight, tonight's going to be a more on the feel. You're going to feel and experience a story. I, I love the power of stories. When I first started, I would always ask people, how did you start? What's your background? Is this your first time? Did you try the product first or did you not try the product at all and just wanted to make money? And then you found out we had amazing products. But when I would hear people's journey, it lifted my spirit. It gave me hope and increased my belief that I could do it. It was possible for me to do it. And I, the more I heard, the, the more those things grew for me. So that's what we're going to do for you here tonight. It's not so much content. It's, uh, it's experience in somebody's journey that we will all be able to connect to, just like I did when I talked to her on the phone about a month ago. So I want to take a moment and recognize, do a couple of quick housekeeping. This is the last call of 2023, which means the next time the Next Level Run Group will meet, uh, that now uh, you see what happens. We started two months ago. We asked for commitment, dialed in. It's a crazy time of year. And we were wanting to move from the couch to a 5K. We'll come January 8th, three weeks from today, we will be doing the more moving part uh, that's actually picking up speed. So we'll be picking up speed and focus and intensity. Quarter one is the most important 90 days of the entire year. It's the setup for the entire year. So you're part of something special. And we'll get you on the right path as we start the year. So this Wednesday, December 20th, no, no presentation to invite to, but I'm going to do a presentation the following Wednesday, December 27th to kind of get people's wheels turning. And we'll do that at 7 p.m. Eastern, same same line, same everything. And we'll let you know about that. So the next time we'll have something for people is getting them off the fence is December 27th on a, on a Isogenics Opportunity Overview. Take a moment to recognize a few things going on. How many of you enjoyed your first team builder bonus payout. That's the first one. How many of you got your two people enrolled? You were consultant manager and you experienced a pay increase. All right. Now that's, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. You, you, you went first. And so now you got a taste of it. We're in the fifth week. We started the fifth of six commission weeks for December and you tasted it. Now, it took a while. There was a lot of excitement in October. We had to live through the November commission month, and here we're getting paid in December. So there's some lag time with it. At the end of the day, we have to enroll too and continue to build that out through. And that's going to be our focus in the 90 days to start the year. So congratulations to all, all you that got a little bonus, a lot of bonus, more than you expected bonus. And you want to be on tomorrow's it's all associate call. Uh, it's going to be dynamite. It's going to end the year strong and start your year strong. If you can't make it there, that will be recorded, but definitely want to be a part of those uh, call. That's a 90 minute call tomorrow, we've been told. So uh, check the Isogenics business page. We'll be letting you know about that. And of course, uh, those people that are taking those actions, I love seeing, like Cindy and Julie both said in recent weeks, I love seeing you all say, I completed, I, I did it, and then I did one more. I did it once, but then I did 10 more. I, I'm having these conversations. I'm getting, Julie, with Cindy, I'm getting texts from people that said, you know what they talked about, Cindy and Julie, when they said this, I went and did it, and this is what happened. I'm getting those stories of action and those testimonies from those actions. So there's definitely a lot of energy in November and December, and that's going to bode well. Remember the stories. Remember three weeks ago when we heard from Janelle. Janelle was found 
through somebody sampling the product in December, but she was found in March. All right, that this is a business, it lags, okay? So those are the things that's gonna happen for us as we continue to take those actions. So tonight, I wanna get right to it. We have Miss Martha Brown with us. She's not in my organization, but I've seen her at, at events. When I went to Nashville, I saw her when I was standing up there talking. I, I saw I saw her. I saw her with Julie. I always see those two together at whatever in pictures. I've seen her at a number of events. And I was curious. And Julie would talk very highly of, of Martha. And I said, do you think Martha would be okay if I reached out and talked to her? I just want to hear her story. That I told you on the front end, I always like to hear people's stories. And she shared her story. I said, would you mind sharing your story in the future? We'll unpack it. There's a lot in her story that I want you to hear tonight that we're going to unpack it. Here's what I want you to know about Martha. In addition to her, her ranks and her achievements and be, being a part of the Global Top Achievers, all those things that she's done, she's done it with integrity. And anybody that knows anything about leadership you want a leader with integrity, and that's Miss Martha Brown. That's who you're going to hear from tonight. So, Martha, we're glad to have you. So many people are excited to to unpack this story. We got about a half a dozen questions for her now. Those that know me know I'm probably going to have a lot more. I'm a question asker, so she'll say something. We'll we'll try to unpack that more. But Martha, to, you know, who's Martha Brown prior to Isogenics, outside of Isogenics, what we might see on social media? Give us some background on Martha Brown. Wow. Well, thanks, Jason, for asking me to share my story, because that's what we're all about is people and their stories. And I actually uh, I've been married to my husband coming up in May will be 40 years and I am a mom to three adult kids who are married. And so I have two boys and a daughter. And among them, they each have two grandchildren. So that's a total of six grandkids. And probably in the near future, we will be grafting in three more through marriage. So that would be a total of nine grandkids. And I just am so blessed by family. That's my top priority, along with faith. And um, we raised our family actually in central Illinois. No, that's not Chicago. Chicago was two and a half hours north of us. The state of Illinois is more than Chicago. Um, and then we moved to Nashville nine years ago when all of our kids were out of the house. So that was me. And I honestly have always loved a good transformation, whether or not it's a design. I was an interior design or whether it was like someone's hair. I had a cosmetology license at one point in my life. Uh, physical transformations, just life transformations are so exciting for me. And so before Isogenics, I was working as an interior designer. I had my own business because I wanted to make my own schedule, but I was trading time for money. And I was truly just living paycheck to paycheck at that time. Well, well Martha, I'm going to pause here for a second. Just to talk to everybody else. When you hear Martha share all the pieces of her story tonight, it's important for you to just find pieces that connect to you, but recognize what she just said. She was an interior designer. She was a cosmetology beauty, right? So they're, they're, who do you know like a Martha Brown? That's the question you <laughs> ask in network marketing. Who do I know that's like a Martha Brown in my life that I would want to have one of those people, find one of those people on my team? So Martha, tell us tell us about that start with Isogenics, why you started Isogenics, and tell us what was going on in your life at that time in, in your journey. So my journey goes back 11 years from now, and I had been having a dear friend called Julie Yurevic nudge me for about six months. She was showing me these little videos she'd pop in my, we didn't really text probably even back then, but we we did emailing and I would always get these little notes from Julie about this thing she had found. And I had been with Julie in other journeys. And so, you know, I, I was like polite, but I was like, mm, no, not right now. Well, 11 years ago, I came up to the holiday, right? Here we are in the holiday. And I got through the holiday and honestly, I was not very excited about where things were headed. I was physically very frustrated and Things in my life and my physical were shifting so dramatically, and I had no answers. 
I was frustrated. I was concerned about where my health would head in the future. I was headed into that M season and um, boy, I was not happy. <laughs> so finally, January, I reached out to Julie. I said, hey, I'll, I'll give this a try. So that was my first yes. And I want you to realize in this journey, you're going to have more than one yes. So that was my first yes. And at the time, I said yes to the products. But Julie, she knows I was absolutely a big N.O. to the business at that point. So that's really what got me started. And I was really thrilled with my results physically. So you had a pain point. The pain point was you weren't happy with your current, which is a natural progression in life. It's it's part of nature, but we didn't like it. And that's a pain point. Understand, and, and every why do people start? There's usually a pain point. There's usually a pain point. She just gave it to you. Pain point. I, I asked a question. She gave me the answer. Pain point. And that's what you're looking for when you have your conversations with people. So at that time in your life, uh, I'm trying to do some math. So you would have been just south of, of the 50. I saw the balloons of the 60 <laughs> that you had. You don't look, you don't look like you could be married for 40 years, that's for sure. But uh so you say yes and you get started with the products. Obviously, you liked them or we wouldn't be here at this point. Was there ever like a defining moment somewhere where you made a decision? that I'm going to work this? Because you were a hard no. Julie was following up with you for six months. You weren't even into the yes on the product. You say yes to the product, have some results. Was there a de de time where you made a decision? And if so, talk to us about that time you went through. Sure. So I was using the products. I went through like two months worth of our 30-day uh, system. And I I was blown away by my results because I, I changed absolutely nothing else. I continued to work out five, six days a week at the time. And that was the thing I changed. And my results, not only did I feel great about how the scale had changed, because that was my mindset at the time. I need to change the number on the scale. I wasn't even to the point where I wanted to choose a healthy lifestyle. Let's just, let's, let's move the number on the scale first. But that's when that light bulb went off for me. I used the product several months and I started to project, okay, I'm sending my third child off to college in August. And I thought, you know, I, I've been with Julie in another experience uh, in network marketing. And I realized what a powerful tool vehicle this can be if you find the right thing. And so that light bulb went off to me, like I could really help a lot of people if I would just be a little purposeful. So that's what happened. You know, I had the second yes came. So my mind opened up to the business opportunity or making some money. I didn't know if I wanted to dive all in, but at that point I worked it alongside my interior design business from home. And I did that for several years. And then I sat at director um, without a lot of urgency really to move forward, but I just was kind of content with that. And um, the level of urgency honestly hit a whole new level after we moved to Tennessee, and that was nine years ago. And uh, we moved our lives to Tennessee for a job opportunity. And that job opportunity for my husband crumbled within the first year and a half. And we had just relocated our lives from a place I had lived for 39 years we built a house. We were having all our kids get engaged and schedule weddings. And my husband's job got pulled out from under him. So let me tell you, if you want some urgency, that moved the urgency up to about here. <laughs> and uh, I knew that I had a gift with this opportunity. And I already had proved that it worked. Um, but it was time to take it to the next level. So to me, that was my third yes where that urgency moved up to a new level. And I decided I need to go for this because God's giving me this opportunity. I have the capacity to work it. I need to get to work. So well, here's what I hear. And this is important for everybody is that the products moved you. There was an emotional experience. I use the phrase often, we want to evoke emotion because emotion leads to action. I'd write that down. If you don't write anything, emotion leads to action and you were evoked. Now, here's the good news. She knocked on the door in the holiday season. 
And this is the beginning of a year. Martha is just a customer in the beginning of the year, and she's having great experience. It moves her to be a 10 or 30 percenter that Jim Rohn would call. She's going to do it. She's still going to do her interior design business, still going to be mom. And then another emotion hits you outside of your control, and that's a negative emotion. And it's like, here, I got something special. I can create a revenue stream. Now, so that that just kind of takes us through that beginning, that those first many, many months in that first year, I got to ask the question. I hear this often. We, I, I, I personally have dealt with it in my 12 year career. Have you ever thought about quitting? And if so, how did you overcome or get through that valley of quitting? Because when you first start and you're excited and things are going, there's a lot of hope, then some things happen that lead you to potentially quitting. How do you get over that or through the valley? Because some of the people are in the middle mile right now, Martha, and this is going to help them. So honestly, the question, did I ever feel like quitting? Yes. <laughs> yes. Not just once. Um, but one of the things I've always asked myself in the midst of those, those moments was, you know, if I don't do this, if not this, then what else? And I honestly cannot come up with another what else that would give me the freedom, that would give me the potential for opportunity, that would allow me to help others, that would allow me to become a better version of myself over and over again. So that was one question I would ask myself in the midst of those lows. Um, and then also, I just had to be really true to myself. Um, what moves me to the core to keep moving? Some of you, Julie's an athlete, Jason's an athlete. I am not a competitive athlete. I, I will admit that over and over again. I cannot be a Julie Jurevic, but I can be a Martha Brown. And so what moves me to the core is that I feel deeply, but I also relate deeply. So one thing that really, really helped me in those moments um, back in the day when I was just pushing and going for what I felt like, can I really do this? One thing that would really help me is in the morning, I'm getting ready. I'm the times that I can't be on the phone or doing my activity. I would listen to isogenicspodcast.com. I'd go in and listen to story after story after story of people who made it happen, made it work against all odds. And those inspired me so much. And that's what kept me moving was listening to people who had come up through hard things and they, they, made it happen. So to me that it made it possible. And, you know, right now we don't have isogenicspodcast.com anymore, but we do have a lot of great things. So if you want to go listen to Dr. Plant, he's got all these amazing videos he's creating through his Instagram account. You can go to uh, isomovie.com. There's a bunch of things there. You can go to isogenicsbusiness.com and you can go under uh, training and go to calls and then go to past calls. If you scroll all the way down, there's actually a section there called strengthening your isogenics vision. So I would just recommend in those low moments, go search out those things and feed your mind with things that are going to help you to keep move. And it just helped me to get my mind back on track and, and the hope would begin to rise again and the faith and yeah, I think I can do this. You know, I just keep going. And um, the third thing I would say is get into activity. The worst feeling that I think I've had in this business is when I was stagnant and I was not in activity and just kicking myself into activity and doing some things. It ends up being such a refreshing relief. And so between, you know, filling my mind with things, just moving forward, those things really helped me through the, the hard times. Well, as you were talking, Martha, I heard, you know, if not, if not now, then, then when, right? If not you, then who, if not this, then what, like, what, what, I, what would I do that could create this opportunity that is, and then the second piece is associations, which meant, you know, I always talk about input output, what you tune into, you turn into, and you tuned into 
stories, stories of hope, stories of people that moved you and what, what you feed, the bread for your head, that's what you did. It got you through the valley, the tough times to continue plowing forward. Here we are over a decade later. I bet that yes, the first yes, you never would imagine you'd be here for over a decade serving the many, many people, loving deeply, caring for people and 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 uh, serving them well. So, so Martha, everyone's gone through that. Some people are in it right now. They signed up for this because they want to level up out of the valley. And I, I guarantee you, you helped somebody come up out of the valley. You gave mm -hmm. them a tool in that answer to move them forward. So let's describe, you, you said you're not a competitive athlete and you care for people. You love people. You're highly relational. Uh, that's your sweet spot. Describe your style of building this business for people. There's, you know, some people always ask, what do you lead with? You lead with the product, you lead with the business. Do, do you do face-to-face -face coffee shops? Are you a master social seller? Do you do home meetings? What's your style? I, well, your flavor is your favor. So what's Martha's flavor? <laughs> oh, I love that. What's the flavor? My flavor. Okay. Um, so because I am relational, as we've all heard, um, I, I really value the face-to-face, the belly-to-belly -face, -face -belly part of this business. Yes, I do social media. Yes, I've gotten better at it through all these years. When they added on Instagram to Facebook, I was like, oh, no, something else to learn. But, you know, I, I, I do my social media so that people know my store is open. But my favorite way to work this business is to, you know, be with people whether or not it's virtually or in person. Um, I just, you know, I encourage all of us to get involved in groups outside of your house. Get in a book club, get in like a church small group or a volunteer opportunity, those kinds of things. I've also really leveraged uh, my participation in open networking groups. And because I've gone to several different types of open networking groups, uh, that leads into, you know, relationships I meet there, but I also get invited to um, like business happy hour networking events uh, that are just very much, you know, mixers. Like you just go and there's hundreds of people or 50 people and you just start talking to someone. <laughs> and in those moments, you know, I just, to me, it feels like you really just need to be a listener. Like you said earlier, Jason, where you listen for the pain points in people's lives now, I've also done, you know, the in-home parties, the cocktails and collagen, the healthy happy hour. I don't think you can just rely on one thing. You kind of have to mix it up and see what works. And sometimes what worked five years ago isn't what works right now. So you just keep trying different things and see where, where people are at. But when I do meet new people, I always am very intentional to exchange contact information. And in that moment, what I do whether or not it's friending them on Facebook or getting their contact in my contacts, I screenshot it because you know what? Two hours from now, when I go home and I've met about 15 people and I've had all these conversations, do you think I'm going to remember off the top of my head? I've lost contacts in my contacts before. So if you just screenshot them, you go through and I can come home and I can go, oh, I've got five people I can follow up with tomorrow. And they're all right there in my photos because I've screenshotted them. So in those moments, I just feel like being a listener, what I found is helping someone else to feel special enough to be heard, to ask good questions, to be a good listener, and just listen for that desire in their life. Listen for a discontent and then follow up with them. You don't have to like cover everything right in that moment, which I think is brilliant because I love then meeting people one-on-one, -on -one, you know, after I've been to these kinds of events. And like last week I had like six one-on-one -on -one scheduled because I had made a point to get into networking groups in the last month. So it's, it's just fun. <laughs> Well, what I hear you say, I love your style. I believe it's the X factor, proximity and conversations. The closer you are to the target, the easier it is to hit it. That's what I hear. You're, you're, you're having conversations with people. Whenever someone feels stuck, there's always a few inches between a rut and a groove. And what gets them out of the rut is conversations, getting close to people, and it opens up possibilities. Like I met so and so. I got one of those last week, a lady, two different days. She I met so and so. Why? Because she's in proximity. She's going to clashes. She's doing those things and putting herself 
in position. So obviously you started the products because of a pain point. You came into this business that you didn't want to do because you want to know part of it because of a pain point, a negative pain. But we all have starter reasons why. And then there's the middle mile reason. Why do we keep going? And you, for you, it was, well, I can't find anything better to do than this. So it, it you kept going. Now you're in a new season, 40 years of marriage. There, It's just a different financial season. It's different marital, relational season. What keeps you going in Isogenics now? What's your motive? What's your current reason why that you continue to show up and build? So, you know, obviously it's extremely fulfilling. I know you've all experienced this at some point or another. It's so fulfilling to help people live at a higher quality of life, whether or not it's their physical life or their financial situation, um, and just help people become better versions of themselves. That is awesome. What a gift we have to be able to do that. But I think for me in this season of life personally, what keeps me going is living with choice. I've been able to choose to go be with my kids and stay for 10 days when they have a baby. I've been able to choose to go to Europe when my father was ill and he lived, um, you know, in the UK and I could see him and spend some precious moments with him because I could choose to go. So having choice in my life to me is it's like nobody can put a price tag on that. And um, because, you know, when you value family, when you value things, that takes time and you, you have to be able to choose. And if I had a traditional job, that would make it really hard <laughs> to get away and to do those things that I really love to do. Well, you're, you're, what I hear is inspiration. You're inspired. You're inspired to the gift that we have. You're not keeping it to yourself. You don't have, you have your fears, but you take courage to act on those fears. And because of that, you are living a significant life, meaning you've gone past success and now you want to have significance, a high calling, a mm -hmm. high person, purpose. You're a person of faith, being a servant all the days of your life are important to you. Mm -hmm. And you're doing it with this vehicle. Uh, those people that are within your proximity are, are fortunate enough to have your wisdom and counsel. Because that, you know, we just don't sell a product. There's more to it than when you're building a team and building. I always tell people we're in the people business. We just happen to move product through people. We're in the people development business. So last question for you as we close down the final call of the year in the next level group. The first quarter, you've done this now. You started in quarter one. <laughs> Julie Julie was on you for what you started in quarter one. Can you talk to us? You've, th you've done this 11 laps around January, February, March. What would you tell us about the importance of starting well, starting strong in January, moving forward these first 90 days, and anything else that you want to give wisdom to for people listening here tonight? Well, I honestly believe even backing up to December, you know, what we're doing right now is going to set us up for what our first quarter is going to look like. And the first quarter obviously is going to set us up for what comes after that. And, you know, I just want to encourage people don't quit because you don't see the fruit of your work right now. Because as, as you alluded to earlier, Jason, a lot of time, it is definitely a delayed effect from the time you do action to the time you see some kind of results. Um, and the outcome in your business doesn't show up right away. So you have to have that long term. OK, I'm doing the work now because I know I'll see something later. And as I was thinking about this earlier today, it really made me think of an analogy of, the, of a farmer. So, you know, like a farmer's planting those seeds and that's what we do all the time. We're planting seeds, we're planting seeds by having conversations, by listening. And when we plant seeds, then like as a farmer does, then he waits, right? But in that waiting, is he doing nothing? No, he's watering, he's tending to, you know, whatever they put on those crops to keep them safe and all the things that he's doing in the waiting. Well, we have things to do in our waiting too. We don't just plant a seed and then just let it sit there. So we have to keep following up. And then the fruit of our labor starts to come and it begins to show up. And then eventually what I love 
you see harvest, right? So that is to me really kind of what this business is like. I always keep feeling like I am just constantly, I've been planting seeds for 11 years <laughs> and, you know, and because I come through a season and then we have a harvest, are we done? No. What happens to the farmer? He has another season, right? He comes around and does another season and, um, you know, then he just, replants his seeds and he does it all over again and that's what we have to do we can't get tired of the the simplicity of the mundane and keeping to do it over and over again because we have new harvest there's new people out there to go to go help and in the 11 years that I've been doing this I feel like now I enjoy my conversations even more because I can relax in them and um I just you know because of this journey, I've become a better listener. I've become a better friend maker. I've become, you know, a better version of myself. And, you know, every day I can get up and say, well, who can I bless today? Who can I help today? And just keep saying yes. Keep saying yes to that process. Well, Martha, we thank you. I, I hope everyone appreciates you and uh, loves on you in the, in the chat here as we close down. I heard a lot about nature. I'm a naturalist. So as you were talking there, you know, I, I the first thing you talked about was fruit. And I always remind people mountaintops are for views and fruit is growing in the valley. You got to go through the valley to mm. experience the fruit. And that's what I heard you say. I, the workers are few. The harvest is plentiful. And that's something that's near and dear to my heart. It only takes a few people. I can only imagine what Julie felt like. Oh my goodness, Martha, if she decides to get her head wrapped around this and she gets close to this and she looks at isogenics, she's going to she's gonna love it. She's going to love what I see. But it took time. It took the first quarter of the year for you to do that. And she loved on you, met you where you were. Here you are over a decade later, your success story, but you're living a life of significance. And that's what this is all about for all of us. I hope that we will get there. We will lead you to living a significant life. And you can do that uh, in Isogenics, in this network marketing community. So Martha, thank you for your time. We, we wish you a great Christmas. Uh, I, I know that you impacted people and the people who watch us on a recording. Team, this is a tool. This is a tool for you to use tonight to share would you just listen to my friend Martha? She reminds me of you. She remind. Would you just listen? And here's what I know: there's a lot of pain. And when Martha spoke about the negative emotion that brought her into business, I know many, many people right now that are experiencing layoffs and surprises and the inflationary increases where they got to cut things out of there. There's a lot of pain. And what we do know is in these times, network marketing thrives when the economy is not good it thrives so you gotta you gotta think differently oh they might not have the money to buy the product no no no. they need the money to live their life <laughs> the margins that got cut out so what are we going to do this week well rest and reflect that's important rest reflect have fun have have whatever indulgences that that drive you for me it's sugar <laughs> i gotta keep that in control that's my guilty pleasure I see Cindy pointing at Scott back there. But we still are closing out the month with six-week commission month. You get your two enrolled. You had Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Those are going to be large paydays for what? To start quarter one and build your business. So continue to focus on getting those two and planting those seeds and being in conversations. Like Martha said, we will see you here again in three weeks as a group. But next Wednesday, I'll lead you through an Isogenics Opportunity Overview. You all have a Merry Christmas and a great week. Good night. Merry Christmas.